Well, welcome once again, everyone, to the Bible or the Baptist Bread Daily Devotional. Amen. And this is Brother Scott, your host, as I bring you these devotionals each and every day. And today is Monday, April 6, 2020. And our topic today is What I Think of Jesus, Part 1. And we all uh, should be more concerned about what Jesus and God think of us, but. Um, i um, not sure how this topic is going to go, but uh, we will find out, and there's two parts to this, so uh, we will get started here. But first, I would like to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and He is the only one that can save your soul. Nothing else can save you, friend, because if something else could save you, if some religion could save you, if water baptism could save you, if going to church could save you, if giving tithe can save you, if... Uh, doing a bunch of good works and sacrifices could save you. Well, then what Jesus went to the cross to do was in vain. But God, the Father, knew that that was the only way to be reconciled with us again and us with him. So he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. And he was born of a virgin, lived a holy, sinless life. And then he went to that cross willingly and to be pleasing to his Father and to die for our sins and be buried and rise again the third day and he did that out of love for all of us and he wants us to repent and to turn to him and trust him as your savior amen so if you have not done so yet well today is the day to do so so just humble yourself admit you're a sinner and that you need a savior and then call upon jesus and he will wash away all your sin so you don't have to perish and end up in hellfire <clears throat> All right, so let us get started here. The author today is, the initials are RP. Those are the initials for <clears throat> RP. Let's see here. That would be Randy Pike, a missionary statesman in Greenville, South Carolina. So let us get started on what I think of Jesus, part one. And our um, book and verse here is Matthew 22, chapter 22 of Matthew, and for, uh, verse 42 says, What think ye of Christ? Question mark. Matthew 22, 42. So, he writes here, Jesus, as he moved among human society in the inspired narratives of his life, as recorded in the four Gospels, we stand near him, watching and listening. We trace his daily course among men, of every rank, going about, doing good, and healing all oppressed of the devil. And that's uh, Acts 10.38. So let's go ahead and read that verse there, Acts 10.38. And let's get there. So if you have your Bible handy, you can turn along with me and read this verse here. So Acts 10. Uh, make sure I get that right. Acts 10.38. <clears throat> and... Let's see here what it says here in the scripture. All right, so Acts 10.38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. So that's what the verse says. <clears throat> and now let's continue on as uh, he continues to write here. Uh, he says, he never slips or falters, was never flustered or ruffled, always small when mighty, always lowly when high. His words are true, his character is so noble and lofty that we bow our heads in shame to remember that he came to save us, sinful mortals, from the hell we deserve, and we sure deserve it. <laughs> we certainly don't deserve anything and everything that God is given us and we deserve hellfire but praise the lord that uh he is long suffering and merciful and gracious towards us that he wants all men to be saved so praise the lord for that but we certainly don't deserve it and we deserve hellfire and probably so much worse because of all the wicked things that we've done towards the lord and uh but praise god that we have that salvation amen all right, continuing on, he says, I see him, the affectionate brother and friend, meekly weeping for others, even his foes, bearing the awful title 
and its effects through his innocent life. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Isaiah 53, 3. Jesus teached uh, out uh, to every human in his path of service. He, uh, his heartaches were ours. His tears were for us. And that's 1 Peter 2, 24. So let's go there and read 1 Peter 2, 24. And read what it says here in 1 Peter 2, 24. <clears throat> All right, 2.24 says, uh, Who, his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. And then we'll read verse 25. It says, For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls capital S Shepherd and capital B Bishop of your souls. That's Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So that is what uh, 1 Peter 2.24 says. And now let's continue on. Every step forward took him deeper into the dark and deadly shadow of the cross. Amid the horrors of crucifixion, he prays for his tormentors, pardons a thief, saves hard bitten Roman soldiers and requests a disciple to care for his broken-hearted mother. Never had the world seen a phenomenon like Jesus. Serious meditation upon these unparalleled scenes of filial uh, love moves us to tears, even unbroken prolonged weeping, or it should, uh, does it? It should. <clears throat> uh, who can co contemplate the amazing life, awful death, and glorious resurrection of Jesus without falling on his face and pleading for divine par uh, pardon? So, uh, that's a question mark there. Uh, so, who, who, can, who can contemplate the amazing life, awful death, and glorious resurrection of Jesus without falling on his face and uh, pleading for divine pardon. Um, who can do that? Uh, today, the heavens have taken him out of sight, but his presence in the Holy Spirit is forever living. Amen. And that's where we'll leave off, and we'll continue with part two tomorrow. So, we should uh, uh, be broken. Uh, if we're not completely broken, I'm I was watching Brother Dean Runyon's uh, message last night, and he had a really good message last night. Uh, so if you have a chance to go look it up, uh, please do so. And it's about uh, being totally broken, and we should uh, be weeping and uh, be more concerned about uh, lost souls and about our own uh, walk with the Lord. And um, sure, we don't weep and, and call out to the Lord as we should. And as we ought, and be totally broken, but uh, praise the Lord that He has saved us, and we should uh, somehow uh, get uh, to that place place where He can uh, uh, continue to uh, work in us and through us. Amen. So pray to that effect. And Brother James had some good sermons yesterday on praying for authority and praying for ministers. So if you have a chance to go. Watch those. I encourage you to go watch those also. So um, let's learn to have more compassion and more concern for the lost and more concern for our walk with the Lord and to cry out to the Lord and, and to really uh, have Him get a hold of us again if we've gotten a little cold-hearted <laughs> towards uh, certain things. And um, let's learn to pray without ceasing. And that's a good verse to memorize. Pray without ceasing. Pray for our leaders. Pray for the government. Pray for our president. Pray for uh, ministers. Pray for missionaries. Pray for, for this country. Pray for this uh, thing that's going on right now. Pray that we can get back to the church house and get back in the fellowship. Pray that, that uh, we would be able to be left alone and continue to live a quiet and peaceful life and that the churches don't get attacked as they've already been a attacked a few uh, churches have been attacked already and and pray that we can uh, congregate together again and uh, get back into uh, 
um, though the way uh, it was before all this happened and um, might not be totally the same as it was before but it probably could be even better and to always seek the Lord in this time and there's lots of time to do it so let's redeem the time amen and do that all right well that will conclude the devotional part so now let us open our Bibles to Psalm chapter 133 is where we left off here and we'll read chapters 133 of Psalm and read some more Psalms and then a uh, and then the daily Proverbs so let's turn to Psalm 133 if you're able to all right so Psalm 133 says a song of degrees of David. And it says here, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. That's a, that's a good verse right there. Let's, uh, let's memorize that verse. Amen. And let's uh, not let them uh, keep us from dwelling together in unity. So, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And however we can get together in unity these days, with everything that's going on, let's try to do it, even if it's a uh, few to get together. Just make sure it's no more than 10 right now, because, uh, you know, they're still telling us we can't have more than 10 to congregate together and find a place to fellowship, whether it be somebody's house or go out to some place public and, and maybe do some ministry together. Just make sure we're practicing that, uh, that social distancing, <laughs> um, however we can do it, amen, but let's try to get together and dwell together in unity in some sort of fashion, amen. Uh, verse 2, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Her Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. Psalm 134. It says, A song of degrees. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary, and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth. Bless thee out of Zion. So nothing wrong with lifting up your hands towards the Lord and having Him reach out and grab a hold of you. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. All right. And Psalm 135. And we'll wrap it up with 135 because it's a little longer than these other two. All right. So Psalm 135 says, Praise ye the Lord. And let's praise Him, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Uh, praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise Him. Three times it says to praise Him. So we know that when the Lord says something once, that we should take heed of it. But when He says it more than once, we should really, really take heed of it. So let's praise Him. Amen. In whatever situation that we're in, let's praise Him and glorify Him. Because whatever happens, He will be glorified in it. Amen. So let's praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, him all, O ye servants of the Lord, ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord. There we go. Another one. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Yes, he sure, sure is. He's the only one that is good. Sing praises. So let's sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. Yes, it is. When we sing out to the Lord, it is present. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, hallelujah. Let's uh, rejoice in the Lord because he is the one that uh, can get us through this. Amen. <laughs> uh, verse 4. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. He sure is. Uh, whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas and in and all deep places he causes the uh, vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings uh, for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasure treasuries. 
uh, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both of, of man and beast, uh, who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of thee, O Egypt, unto Pharaoh and upon all his servants, who smote great nations and slew mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for an heritage, and heritage unto Israel his people. Uh, the name of the Lord endureth forever. Yes, sir, it sure does. The name of the Lord endureth forever. And thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will repent himself concerning his servants. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So is every one that trusteth in them. Oh, boy. Uh, bless the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. Ye that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. So we should all bless the Lord. If we fear him, that is, we should bless him. Amen. Uh, blessed be the Lord out of Zion, which dwelleth at Jerusalem. And here we go to finish up. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. And he starts out by saying, praise ye the Lord. And he ends by saying, praise ye the Lord. Amen. So let's praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It's good to praise the Lord and glorify in the Lord and rejoice in the Lord. Amen. All right. Well, <clears throat> we will continue next time in Psalm 136. And now let's turn to the daily proverb as we are in this sixth day of April. <clears throat> and we'll read uh, chapter six today. And it says here in verse one, my son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go humble thyself. <laughs> yeah, uh, how often do we do that? <laughs> yes, it is a good way to start and finish. Amen. <laughs> uh, so we should go humble ourselves and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. And here we go. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which, having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. And Brother Dean has a good scripture song on those, uh, Verses right there, 6 through 8, about uh, going to the ant. And um, if you have a chance to look that up, I encourage you to do so, along with all of his scripture songs. You can go to uh, www.dailyscripturesongs.com and look up all his uh, scripture songs. And I believe you can download them all um, on the website there. Uh, so have them for yourselves. And he's got a CD for every month. Amen along with a uh, favorite CD. So go check that out. All right, verse 10. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Uh, let's not be like that person. Hmm. Take heed to these uh, verses too. Proverbs is good to know not uh, to live not this way. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 15. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Not a little bit at a time, but suddenly. Oh boy. Uh, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate, 
Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, a ha and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. So, let's learn not to do these uh, uh, six things, along with all sorts of other things that the Lord tells us not to do, because he hates these things and even um, abhors them, and they're an abomination to him. So, let's learn not to uh, go that way. Verse 20, My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart. So not just once in a while, but continually upon uh, upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall uh, lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Well, what do you think? No, he will be burned, and his clothes will be burned. Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? Um, no, his feet will be burned. So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall, be, shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. And as we wrap it up here in verse 35, it says here, He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Hmm. And that will wrap it up for our Psalms and Proverbs reading for today. And praise the Lord. So let's praise the Lord. Amen. And rejoice in the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. And we will continue uh, tomorrow with part two of what I think of Jesus. So hope you'll come back for part two tomorrow. Amen. And so until next time, I will wrap it up for today. And before I go, just a real quick uh, gospel message for you here. If you're not saved, uh, please, please, I beg of you and pleading with you to trust Jesus as your Savior because... Nobody wants to go to hellfire, I know that for, for a fact, and if you do, well, I mean, I guess you do, but I uh, hope and pray you'll trust Jesus as your Savior so you don't have to go to that awful place and for all eternity, and it says that Jesus is the, tr the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh to the Father but by Him, and so hope you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, and thou shalt be saved. All right, well, may the Lord richly bless you, and you all have a great and wonderful rest of your Monday, and I will be back here, Lord willing, later to give you the daily Bible reading as we continue in Second Samuel, and continue in the book of Second Samuel, so stay tuned for that. Amen, and thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all, Lord willing, next time. Brother Scott, signing off, so bye-bye for now. Amen. And remember, keep praising the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs>